this is a partner game. So once everything is set up, we'll go back here. No, I'll move over here. It's over here. Hey everyone, it's Susan Jones, and welcome back to my Sunday Spotlight. This upcoming week is Halloween, so I wanted to get on here and share a quick and fun game that you can play with your students this week. Even if you don't celebrate Halloween too much in your classroom, this is a very easy to prep game that you can just print out and throw in a math center. All you need to play this game is a skeleton like this one, just a big picture of a skeleton, and 10 different Q-tips or cotton swabs. This skeleton strategy game is actually a game I've included in my Halloween activities unit that I've had uploaded on TPT and I think I've shared some images on my blog all the way back in like 2012. So inside that unit there are plenty of word work activities, some writing prompts, and some math games and this is one of them that I love. There's also a fun uh, craft that I used to do with my kids, which has kids hiding under a mask. I'll go ahead and insert a picture here. This was always one of my favorite bulletin boards, so I thought I would share this now. But basically, students create themselves and hide themselves under a mask, and then they go ahead and share facts about themselves, and they have to try to answer the riddle and guess who is who when the bulletin board is all done. I'll have the unit linked below, but onto the skeleton strategy game that you can play this week. Remember, all you need is the skeleton and some Q-tips. Let me show you how to play. I love this Halloween game because it is simple and it is easy to prep, just like most of the activities that I share with you every Sunday here on my Sunday Spotlight. But all you do is prep it like this. I'm gonna go ahead and insert a picture and you'll see that you will spread those Q-tips out along the skeleton's body. They're basically the bones of the skeleton. So depending on the skeleton that you print out, you might need one for the head, two for each arm, a couple for the body, and then maybe two for each leg or something like that. You'll spread it out like that. This is a partner game, so once everything is set up, students will take turns removing one or two bones from the skeleton. And the object of the game is to be the last person to take a bone. So once you introduce these rules to your students, I kind of just leave it at that. I make it very simple and you go around and you observe them and you start to see that it takes a little bit of time for this game to catch on with their students. It takes a little bit of time to realize that there's some strategy behind this game and as they think about taking one of those bones, how many are gonna be left? Is the next student going to be able to just go ahead and grab one or two of them because then they would win and you'd be left with nothing? It kind of evolves over time, which is really fun to watch. Like I said, those first couple of rounds go really quickly because students are like, wait a second, how did I just lose so quickly? They, they don't really comprehend what has happened. But as they continue to play the game over and over with their partner, they start to realize that there's really subtracting and strategizing going on. To make this really cost effective, you can go ahead and just laminate these boards, these skeletons, and you really only need one per pair of students, so at maximum you might need 15 or 16 of them. Go ahead and laminate them and save yourself the trouble every single year. This is a game my students always love and it's sure to bring out a lot of giggles in all your kids. But I really like to, after we play that first couple times, bring my students together and ask them what they noticed as they were playing the game. This is where you can really gain some insight into what your students are understanding as they play this strategy game. As I already mentioned, this game is included in my Halloween activity unit, but I've actually gone ahead and found a skeleton that you can print out below. I can't include the one that I showed you today because that's the one from my unit, and due to clip artist copyright, I can't just give that to you. But there are plenty of skeleton options that I listed below that will work just as fine. And that's how you play the skeleton strategy game. If you go ahead and use this with your classroom this year, or if you have in the past, or plan to this week, go ahead and let me know in the comments, and maybe afterwards you can come back and tell me how it went. I want to see if your kids loved it as much as mine always did. As always, thank you for tuning into my Sunday Spotlight. I will be sure to see you next week, and if you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up so I know. Click subscribe and hit that bell. That way you're notified of all my new videos. Thanks, guys. Bye. My friend Michelle actually introduced me to this game back when I was teaching in Vegas like 10 years ago, so shout out to Michelle.